Welcome back and hopefully you enjoyed the coffee break and the beautiful scenery images provided by Elisa 5G. You'll be seeing these beautiful scenes from Oulu throughout the conference and is brought to you by the fastest, most advanced 5G connection in the world, crispy clear, no delays at all. But now it is time for the panel debate. In its proposal for the next Research and Innovation Framework Programme, Horizon Europe, setting out the EU's priorities and funding for R&I from the 21 to 27, the European Commission has included, for the first time, a section on European innovation ecosystems under Pillar 3, Innovative Europe. Considering innovation ecosystems as critical levers to ensure a sustainable and inclusive recovery while boosting the resilience of our production sectors, the competitiveness of our economies and the transformation of our socio-economic systems, we have invited as participants to our debate the Research and Innovation Director General of the European Commission, Business Olo, Nokia, and the KU Leuven Research Development and the City of Helsinki. The objective of this panel is for the main actors and important stakeholders of the innovation local ecosystems to articulate their views and share recommendations about innovation ecosystems, their role in the recovery and also their future. We will exchange good practices on cities, local innovation ecosystem with a strong focus on recovery. The dialogue will seek ways for cities to engage with other stakeholders and gain support from the European Commission for the creation of the next generation of local innovative ecosystems and ensure the visibility of cities' role in driving local innovation ecosystems as channels of EU funds to cities. Questions will be addressed to two groups in the panel and I also would like to remind you that you, our dear forum members, will be able to send questions through the deal room platform, so keep your fingers warmed up because I think the discussion is going to be very lively. And I also want to say that we've taken into account the appropriate safety measures and distances and thus our panel members will not be wearing masks while we have the discussion. But now, let me introduce you to the panelists. Firstly, I would like to introduce the Deputy Mayor of Helsinki, EDF Chair Pia Pakarinen. Welcome. Then, I would like to introduce Fabienne Gauthier, Head of Unit European Innovation Council in Innovation Ecosystems from the European Commission DG Research and Innovation, joining us virtually. Welcome, Fabienne. Fine. Okay. Then, Mr. Juha Alamorsula, Executive Director of Business All. Joining us virtually will be Michael de Blauer, Business Development Manager at KU Leuven Research and Development Leuven I Capital 2020. Welcome, Michael. And finally, Olli Linama, Ecosystem Manager from Nokia. Welcome all. Thanks. And now we will start the first set of questions for the City of Helsinki and European Commission. And we'll be talking about past, present and future. Pia, how has Helsinki responded to the, to the different crises throughout its innovation ecosystems? Yes, well, Helsinki has also been hit hard by the pandemic and uh, service sector, tourism, cultural services, uh, event uh, organizers, uh, they form the backbone of our, our economy or our uh, businesses. And uh, as we all know, they have been hit hard, especially the youth in unemployment figures are very discouraging. I think the measures uh, we have taken in the city of Helsinki are very similar to those that are taken by the other cities uh, in Europe. Uh, these include like uh, subsidizing rent, uh, providing emergency funding, providing new business advisory services and so forth. Uh, the start, uh, startups have actually fared quite well from the uh, crisis. Uh, that is good news. But uh, 
but still the the older or the other than digital services have have suffered. Uh, I think that coronavirus has actually uh, revealed more than it has changed. Uh, what it has revealed is our weaknesses. And uh, we in the city of Helsinki, we have this uh, strategy named uh, the best functioning city of the world. Uh, that's the basis of everything we do. And I think that is something that we have to follow even uh, even uh, during the crisis. Uh, I think this is also a good opportunity to uh, really make use of digitalization to get uh, speedier services for, for our inhabitants. I give you three examples of what we have actually done. Uh, the Helsinki City Board is uh, ab about to approve funding of uh, 20 million euros next week for COVID recovery and economic development projects, uh, which relate to digitalization, circular economy, and early growth R at D at I led company development. So 10 million goes to a portfolio of digitalization development projects. Uh, 6 million uh, go towards developing business incubation services. Uh, and university campuses, uh, 4 million towards developing a circular economic cluster to spur innovation and exper experimentation uh, uh, with and more among companies in the construction industry. So this is where circular economy uh, is uh, concerned in our plan. Uh, second example is that uh, since the crisis hit, uh, the city of Helsinki's innovation fund has approved financing for ecosystem development projects. And these cover uh, sustainable urban technologies and the future of education. For me, as a deputy mayor for education, this is really good news. Uh, we have launched an acceleration program, program for early stage companies in these two fields. And the third example would be uh, done by the Finnish government, which has declared that Finland will be the most effective environment for experiments and innovations in the world by 2030. With this target in mind, the Ministry for Economy and Employment launched new ecosystem agreements funded by the EU with Helsinki as well as with other Finnish cities. And Helsinki, Espoo and Vanta, uh, the great Helsinki area, will be carrying projects uh, focusing on uh, firstly, smart and sustainable urban solutions. Secondly, well-being and health technology. Uh, thirdly, new uh, learning environments. And fourthly, digital solutions of skills development. So you hear the word digitalization for many, many times, but I think that this is also our uh, opportunity to really get something new started. Sounds wonderful. So, in a way, you can say that the crisis has boosted the creation of innovative solutions and new balance among the local innovative stakeholders. Exactly. That's wonderful. I think we would like to move on to the European Commission now, and this next question is directed to Fabienne. So, Fabienne, what is the European Commission planning to design, to put forward, to support the local innovative actors in order to build new generation of the innovation ecosystems to create post-crisis resilient economies? Thank you and uh, good morning everybody. Uh, yes indeed, the Commission has also a huge role to play uh, in supporting the recovery and also supporting our economies and our citizens, which have really been hard, hit hard uh, by the current crisis. So here we have a huge role to play, and this is also what we are doing at a European level uh, in support of the recovery, but not also only in support of the recovery per se, but also supporting the challenges that we are facing. Uh, which are, for instance, on which we also need to act all together. For instance, uh, the digitization or the climate change, which uh, in, uh, in, in fact also have uh, some conse the consequences uh, that we are also currently bearing. So the Commission is playing its role. And um, what we also could see from the current uh, crisis is that, uh, indeed, in order to uh, be able uh, to recover and in order also to be able to 
support our economies uh, and our societies, we indeed need innovative solutions. And that's precisely what uh, the Commission uh, will be doing in uh, it, through its uh, program uh, that are supporting uh, financially uh, research and innovation, and notably uh, the next framework program for research, Horizon Europe. And um, as uh, mentioned in the introduction, under Horizon Europe, we have a clear focus uh, on uh, supporting also innovation and supporting our uh, innovators and the companies, the startups that they are creating in order to find out these uh, innovative solutions. And why do we support uh, these companies and why do we support our innovation uh, players? Um, precisely because um, we have uh, in Europe excellent research, we have excellent outputs from research, but we also have to make the state statements uh, that in the global competition we also need uh, to be stronger and also uh, to ensure that these innovations, that these solutions uh, that will be, be brought forward for our citizens and economies also are reaching out to the market and that they also get the funding that uh, they, so, that they uh, uh, so much need. And this is what we uh, will do through this uh, specific um, pillar of Horizon Europe, our next framework for, program for research, uh, on which we will uh, dedicate a significant part of funding, more than 10 billion euros, in order to support innovation and to support disruptive innovation. First of all, uh, and uh, you mentioned uh, also in the introduction, the, uh, the um, innovation ecosystems, which will uh, be complementary to uh, one of the main uh, instruments that will be used uh, to uh, support innovators, which which is the creation, the setting up of an EIT of the European Innovation Council that will specifically be, ded be dedicated uh, to innovative uh, companies, to disruptive innovation at European level. Through the European Innovation Council, on which we have uh, piloted a number of uh, activities under Horizon 2020, we would like really to create a one-stop shop for all innovators uh, in Europe in order for them to get Get, uh, access, to get access to funding uh, in relation to their innovation, to their innovative projects, uh, which uh, need to grow, which need to scale up in order also to get access uh, to the market and also to reach out uh, to uh, investors at national or at European uh, level. So here through the European Innovation Council, we have foreseen a funding instrument, funding tools, on which um, innovators will be able to find support for their innovations that uh, cover the whole value chain of innovation, reaching out from the moment where these ideas emerge in research centers, in universities, in uh, companies, uh, to the moment where they are close to uh, reach out their commercialization phase and reaching out to the market. So the whole value chain will be covered through the EIC, through the European Innovation Council, and we will foresee uh, some uh, flexible and some uh, new instruments in order to support this innovation. First of all, through what we call the Pathfinder, which is uh, this moment where you have the idea that emerges until it reaches out its pre-commercial phase, where we will continue funding these uh, solutions via grants, for instance, uh, under the European Innovation Council. These are uh, instruments which are similar to what we know under Horizon Europe, support to SMEs, uh, price funder activities, uh, and, um, and so on. So here, these activities, these uh, funding will be provided to those uh, innovation uh, solution, innovative solutions. Then from the moment where we can reach out to the market, we will uh, create or we are setting up uh, the establishing what we are calling the EIC accelerator, where here we will uh, fund or support through a kind of mixed type of funding uh, innovations uh, that uh, would need to get access to private or public investment. So here the Commission will be taking part into this uh, innovation, into this investment process, and will fund those companies via grants and also via, via uh, equity funding, for instance, in the sense that we really invest on those companies which are 
promising uh, to reach out to the market and where we want to support these companies from the moment where they are scaling up, where they are uh, further need where they further need access to some specific investors and to some investment also at private level. So here the European Innovation Council will directly support those companies and SMEs and startups in order to help them grow in order to reach out to the market. And complement uh, to what we will do with the EIC, uh, with the European Innovation Council, uh, we also foresee an action at the level of the innovation ecosystems themselves. Uh, when we look into the innovation ecosystems definition under our Next Framework program, it is very broad. We have many players that are involved at European level, national level, regional level, um, in uh, the in. Uh, 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 pushing for innovation and also in, um, in, in providing these uh, innovative solutions for our societies and economies. So there is a broad variety of actors. It reaches out uh, from universities, research centers, SME startups, funding bodies, uh, governmental authorities at uh, local or at national level, uh, investors, corporates and so on. And uh, what we uh, could uh, state in consulting our stakeholders in building up our policies for the future is that while uh, all these actors are most of the time uh, very well uh, um, very well established in their own ecosystems where they are also uh, getting the support that they need, the connection sometimes uh, between those different players is not so easy to find, notably to go beyond their own markets and also to reach out to new players, new actors like investors, for instance, or also to new, um, to new ecosystems, to other ecosystems, which are maybe not necessarily local or regional, but which could go beyond nationally at European level or even globally. And it is these connections that we would like to foster also in complementarity what we are doing with the EIC, with the European Innovation Council, through the actions that we intend to foster through uh, the European innovation ecosystems. So for the first time under Horizon Europe, we have foreseen a dedicated budget in order to support innovation ecosystems uh, in Europe uh, with an amount of 0.5 billion uh, that uh, is stemming from uh, this third pillar and which is dedicated to innovation ecosystems. And we will put forward a number of activities in support to these innovation ecosystems and in support then to the actors that are operating at national or uh, regional or local level. So here we foresee a number of initiatives. For instance, uh, we will uh, foster some initiatives that will interconnect innovation ecosystems themselves uh, through, the, the, through support to uh, joint uh, programs, joint strategies, joint activities on which we will co-fund via EU funding, via European funding through Horizon Europe, uh, there's, uh, there's a joint initiative, these joint programs. We will be able to support uh, fully fledged uh, action plans or joint innovation plans in the bottom up approach, in the bottom up mode where we do not specifically focus on one sector or the other, uh, or also the type of uh, action that is funded, like for instance also preparatory actions for these co-funded activities. So here, once some activities are launched at, your, at national or regional level, we want to contribute also to these joint activities, joint innovations, uh, the innovation programs or strategies via a co-fund uh, co possibilities. Then what we will also do, for instance, we will stimulate um, uh, building capabilities at the level of the innovation ecosystems uh, in relation to some tools that uh, innovation ecosystem players, uh, for instance, public, uh, public uh, companies, public authorities, uh, or uh, could use, for instance, on innovation procurement. So here we will also support through dedicated, uh, dedicated actions, some uh, the improvement or also the emergence of new tools at European level that can be used by the innovators like uh, innovation procurement. What we will also do um, uh, through this uh, specific uh, program on uh, innovation ecosystems, we will also support via the innovation ecosystems um, the uh, scaling up processes of businesses and companies. For instance, when there are 
expanding their businesses, accelerating their businesses at local, regional or national level or European level. Uh, we will support entrepreneurial uh, ecosystems and uh, also activities that, for instance, support the getting access to some competences, some skills that they need in order also to uh, put their innovations on the market and also support also uh, the ecosystems in the sense that uh, these ecosystems are also providing the adequate access to funding to investors, also to these comp companies at local, regional or national level. So this is also uh, some kind of activities that we will foresee under innovation ecosystems. We will also, uh, you, we will also contribute with policymakers at national and European level to uh, global reflections about uh, the hurdles to innovation and the hurdles to more efficient innovation ecosystems at European level via a policy forum where we will bring in all the various actors of innovation ecosystems to discuss on uh, topics that are of common interest or to discuss some barriers that could hinder innovation. For instance, legal barriers, uh, um, uh, administrative barriers that happen at national or local or regional level in Europe so that we can also find solutions at policy level with uh, policymakers in Europe in order to also build better functioning innovation ecosystems. So here, just just to summarize two types of, um, of uh, support that we foresee through Horizon Europe, funding support directly dedicated to disruptive innovation to our innovators via the European Innovation Council and support uh, via uh, innovation ecosystems working on the ecosystems themselves in close collaboration with the various players of innovation ecosystems in Europe, uh, which involves uh, a broad range of ecosystems. And to keep in mind as well is that we do not only on our actions on ecosystems, do not only foster on tech or deep tech innovation, we are also looking for social innovation and uh, public sector innovation, which I believe also for uh, players like cities are essential. And within the ecosystems and our policies under Horizon Europe, we will also work in synergy with other programs, for instance, that are also providing support and funding at European level via, for instance, uh, cohesion funds, for instance. And uh, we will, uh, for instance, also work closely uh, in complementarity with uh, such schemes like um, into regional innovation investment programs at European level. So here also building synergies with other funding possibilities at European level. So here, uh, this would be uh, in a summary what we intend to do specifically for ecosystems and specifically for the broad variety of actors that are contributing to innovative solutions in Europe and which where we uh, need to work also together and to bring in to better connect these actors in order to find in common also some solutions to challenges that in any case one cannot solve uh, alone at national level or at European level. Thank you, Fabian. It seems the Commission is thinking big, just as Martin Sandbu was advocating in his keynote earlier. And I want to now take the discussion to the city level again. So, Pia, in your opinion, what will or should be the role of a city and city-to-city -city cooperation in recovery for a more resilient Europe? Yes, uh, since I'm empowered, what Martin Sandbu said earlier, I think that uh, cities will be the most imp uh, important actors. If we can start uh, to open up economies and uh, boost the growth, then the rest will follow. And it was uh, nice to hear also what Fabian said. Uh, this sounded good. It might uh, seem unimaginative uh, to ask money uh, from a commission, but still uh, we need funding uh, for our projects and uh, the uh, division of that money sounded good. <laughs> um, uh, so I think that uh, we in the cities, we have this hands on information on the needs of the companies and that's that's uh, the most important thing. We really know where it's needed and that's uh, I want I would like the Commission to keep the cities on mind. But the cities, even the big, biggest ones, they are not able to solve the problems alone. Actually, uh, COVID-19 has brought us uh, new problems to solve, but still the old ones remain our salt, as we heard uh, from Martin uh, earlier. We have climate change, we have segregation and, and all the old, old problems, uh, which might even grow bigger. 
But I think that the most successful cities uh, will be the cities uh, that are able to build ecosystems around the central topics these mentioned, central topics, and find solutions together, together uh, with other cities, but also uh, together uh, with the ecosystem and, uh, and the inhabitants also. I think that uh, city projects uh, funded by RRF produce solutions which will have an impact on the everyday life of the citizens. Uh, digitalization of the social and health uh, care services, for instance, uh, would give us speedier access to services and that is something very vital we have to do. So we hope uh, in the city of Helsinki that RRF uh, will be directed to investments which ha enhance long-term reforms and particularly digitalization of public services. Uh, that would be very beneficial in, in order for us to really recover and uh, not just to get back to the history but have a leap forward. Yes, move forward. And I think some really wonderful and concrete suggestions we got from there. I think it would be important now to bring in the local innovation ecosystem players too. So uh, Juha, Olli and Mikhail. And I would like to start with Juha first. Uh, what is your reaction to the first round discussion between uh, Fabien and Pia? Uh, let's take it from the business solo perspective. Uh, if you think about Horizon Europe, does it actually match your needs? <clears throat> yeah, the horizon goals are, are something what we are looking forward and it is also very applicable to the um, environment what we have here. Always the area we have a lot of high-tech related uh, companies and digitalization is the, the our biggest uh, industry area. So therefore we have a lot of uh, things what we can develop, improve the local economy, but also in the global perspective as well, for instance in 5G and also in coming to 6G areas. And there we need to have kind of, kind of horizon type uh, vehicle, uh, uh, innovation vehicle and financing systems, but also the partnering side. And uh, I'd like to take this to the European level, uh, that uh, uh, we have many things where, uh, where Europe is behind uh, and, and therefore we need to have a good cooperation between the cities uh, and the kind of innovation areas in Europe. And uh, like in software side, uh, if you look about the whole software industry, only 3% of the, the value is now en ending up to Europe. 97% outside of Europe and I think it like in Horizon should be working in such a way that uh, the kind of value capture of this, this uh, digitalization is also landing to Europe more than what is going outside of the US and in Asia. And, uh, and because we are in, in this kind of uh, business, uh, in our industries is this kind of business and our city could be kind of test platforms and also other cities what we are now working for instance with, with Helsinki uh, uh, and Espo and, uh, and uh, Tampere and so on. So we have a uh, kind, of, uh, kind of testing platform for many of the applications which can be then uh, worldwide uh, roll out and, and European level things. But Horizon is a good uh, vehicle there, but also there is uh, some things what need to be a little bit more developed that uh, sometimes the application process is, is a little bit too complicated uh, and a little bit too long lasting and, and like a Finnish expression is saying that uh, sometimes the lake is getting frozen or the swamp is frozen before the birds start to fly. And this is sometimes applicable also for, for uh, Horizon programs that uh, uh, it just takes so long that uh, the company uh, is, is lost in the opportunity uh, there. So therefore, hopefully we can find a little bit uh, lighter application processes, uh, uh, those kind of Horizon programs. Uh, that would be our, our wish uh, uh, to do. And, but it's applicable for the uh, mid-sized or bigger uh, companies and the uh, research and university activities. You mentioned earlier the innovation ecosystem here in Oulu and what kind of players it has. Could you tell the forum members a bit, what was the initial strategy to kick off, start and develop the local ecosystem here in Oulu? And who are the main stakeholders involved? Uh, in Oulu we have an innovation alliance where it belongs to all the... Uh, we have two universities, we have a state research centres, we have their uh, vocational uh, schools, then we have a kind of uh, sectoral research units, altogether eight 
players and then uh, university hospital. Uh, we have a very structural things that we are meeting every, every month. And then we have about 450 companies uh, par participating in the 12 uh, big programs uh, what we have in, inside this uh, innovation, uh, innovation alliance. And our goal is to, we have a common goals. We, we uh, try to get a kind of new kind of value add uh, coming out of these innovations. It means that uh, uh, it will generate into new jobs, new kind of investments, and new kind of products and services. But uh, our idea is to get this value add because the value that is something what is also bringing them to business in the, in the future. And the, and the public players role is the enabler and the risk sharing. And then the entrepreneurs are really doing the, the work uh, uh, and the getting uh, uh, something uh, there out. And, and we have built there several clusters uh, uh, inside of this uh, innovation alliance point of view. So that, and always is in that sense, excellent place because we are big enough that we have everything, but we are small enough that we know these others. So, so therefore this optimum size uh, and everything what can be done here is in, in, in 15 minutes. So we don't need to travel so far away. And even we can, most of things do with, with the bicycle okay. because of the good bicycle roads. International at home, so to say. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. <coughs> then I would like to bring in Olli from Nokia, because you are one of the private sector actors who are working in this uh, innovation ecosystem. So the question simply is, how does Nokia co-create in the local innovation ecosystem, and how do you collaborate with local authorities and stakeholders? Right. <coughs> so that's really the bread and butter, butter for my daily work. <laughs> so this. This cooperation with the surrounding ecosystem uh, for new innovation in includes, of course, all kinds of direct contacts to other companies whose business is somewhat related to what, what Nokia is interested in. And, and, and also, of course, public organizations like cities, government, regulators, etc. And depending on what we want to achieve, then the toolbox is a bit different. If I want to secure the best brain to, to join Nokia also in the future, then we are, then we need to ensure that the youngsters have, first of all, then selecting the mathematics and sciences for their high school agenda. And then, uh, and then we need to put an effort and do later on at the high school phase so that, that the, all those who are, are learning mathematics and, and those, those critical, critical topics and particularly affecting girls, so that to make sure that the next step would be on technical studies. And, and then finally on universities and polytechnics then to, to, to promote Nokia as a preferred employer. So it's in, in that sense just hard work. And then depending on if you want to introduce some smart city services like, like you have pointed out as an ecosystem activity, then that is after all then mostly hard work. So the technology in most cases is already there. Uh, it requires just people, dedication, the related technology, and then the budget. And the practical, very, very practical way of getting things somewhat progressing and, and really done is to, is to, to formulate the ideas then to a, to a form of project proposal and then, then apply for commitment and, and funding from all, all the related stakeholders. And once we get once, once we know how the activities are funded, what do we want to achieve, then it's simply execution. Simple so as all that. And then the city really can offer a lot of usable platforms, areas, places, where, where we can then try these things for the first time and then scale it if, if successful. As we can hear, so Olu is a success, successful example of a local innovation ecosystem that works. So Olli and Juha, what are the critical success factors for this kind of local innovation work? How do you make it successful? It's the trust is the uh, one thing would need to be there in, in, in place number one. So we need to have a trust uh, in, in order to cooperate between the different parties. Second is the open uh, dialogue open conversation and, and we need to uh, may, make such an environment that uh, even the competitors can be in the same room and sharing the thoughts. 
Third is then, of course, the know-how. We, we need to have a good know-how and we need to have a good access to academic and, and then also requires very global networks because uh, we need to have always the best possible talent and best possible know uh, worldwide there. And then uh, kind of uh, entrepreneurship so that uh, you need to be really uh, some, uh, some there be people who are really dedicated to, to this execution and like to take these things because everything whatever you, new things you are doing they are coming always the uh, the problems what need to be all challenges nowadays what the, are those there are no problems there are challenges so the challenge what need to be solved and you need to have a there good way to do is and then of course then we need to have a, a execution uh, to the market so we need to find uh, the ways and the dialogue with the customers who are really needing this uh, new kind of uh, activity and and this the whole process need to be done and work as as uh, quickly as possible so that access to the market is uh, need to be involved in in very early stages uh, 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 to this process and that's how kind of uh, uh, things what we are thinking Maybe only have some something more. No, I, I'm fully supporting with what, what what you were saying. So I I would also highlight and the already earlier mentioned this the city size, big enough, but at the same time small enough, and then this op openness in the discussion culture. So we have a lot of these kind of forums like this innovation alliance and and similar forums where we are sharing thoughts, and in this city then the the the. the the culture is such that, that the companies are not afraid of sending you to, uh, to even to a competitor. If I'm not able to help you, then talk to this guy in that company and, and, and then perhaps they can, they can, they can support you. Uh, it's a good example. Some years ago, about three years ago, uh, we started to look about uh, what we could offer uh, to car industry. And now we have a built kind of cluster for around the car industry. We have about 100 companies, about 60, 70 from all, but then rest of the Finland about uh, about 30. And now uh, this cluster has able to sell uh, product and services all the uh, different car manufacturers except Tesla and Lada is missing, <laughs> but all other ones are involved with this, uh, the cluster uh, customers at the moment. So, so that is the kind of example that when we start to do, and there are small companies, some of the bigger companies, but they have been now able to generate uh, uh, access to all the car manufacturers, except this Tesla and Lada, but uh, like in Chinese, US, European, and, and so on. And most of the car will have uh, uh, com this uh, uh, coming years, uh, some of the products would have been designed and manufactured here in uh, in Finland. I think Olu has cracked the secret code of astrophysics, just like the universe. It was born out of a delicate balance and a big bang happened. And this is the big bang of innovation. Uh, Juha and Olli, one more question to you. Have you already involved uh, using the innovation and local innovation ecosystem in the recovery process of the city? Or do you have an opportunity to link this local innovation ecosystems in the national recovery plans? Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, uh, as as uh, Vice Mayor uh, Helsinki mentioned, there have been a lot of nice plan what Helsinki has been done. Uh, we have done similar things, but of course a little bit smaller scale when we have uh, uh, our economy is a little bit smaller. But then we have uh, a huge amount of things for digitalization side. So we have uh, e-commerce activities been taken up uh, hundreds of even thousand companies so that uh, there is a kind of net sa net uh, 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 sales has been taken web sales uh, and, and ki all kind of uh, uh, e-commerce activities. Then we have also uh, make a plan how to transfer the business models a little bit uh, different kind of things, build a new kind of channels, uh, uh, distribution channels. Also in per case inside, we have been utilizing a lot of uh, kind of remote uh, uh, activities, uh, uh, for instance, applying uh, uh, sourcing the material, for instance, uh, from Asia and from US in order because we need to have a lot of these th uh, activities. And then also for the coming months, uh, uh, we are now focusing the plan uh, how we can uh, the screen transfer side. We have a lot of uh, activities going on of uh, how to increase the uh, CO2, uh, uh, reduce the CO2 uh, emissions. We have uh, uh, plans to uh, for instance, in our metal industry, what is the big activity here? How we can utilize uh, 
utilize kind of new ma manufacturing processes or in order to get even 60% of the uh, CO2 emissions. Uh, digitalization side, we are focusing very much how to build a new kind of 5G and 6G uh, uh, solution side. And in healthcare side, uh, we, and, and kind of uh, we, we see that how we can build a new, uh, more uh, re resilient uh, 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 healthcare systems in order to utilize digitalization, but also kind of remote uh, services, uh, uh, so that uh, you, don't, you don't need to physically meet the, the doctors and, and, and patients uh, at the same place. And uh, also in, in the workforce point, point of view, there are some, some activities ongoing. So very large scale, all those pillars, what the uh, Finnish government has been taking, we have been active. Yeah, the, <coughs> uh, Pia Pakarinen already commented there that, that now during the ongoing pandemic, then the, the winners have been those who have already deployed the digitalization, whose business is, is really based on, on online services and everything digitalized. And, and now with, uh, with 5G coming out and, and this mobile, mobile wireless connectivity, then that introduces so much still new opportunities which are not yet there. We, we, we still need to capture the value. So well beyond current cat video experiences <laughs> where we are using the, the, the mobile net or 5G today. So streaming, streaming via, via smartphone. So this when this technology and digitalization is, is applied to different sectors of society, like, like you have pointed out, then the, then the technology providers, the service developers, customers need to cooperate tightly. So this is really the key. And what we have done already now as, as practical examples, then to, to boost these kind of things that, that on, on different sectors, what, what you have listed, then for example, in this local hospital, we have Nokia delivered the, 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 the indoor, indoor mobile, private mobile network and, and that's, that's offered then openly for testing e-health services and all those gadgets that, that could be then providing those services that, that were mentioned. And similarly then uh, uh, a local harbour, the portfolio has then the private mobile network and that is also offered openly for the ecosystem to, to, to try new innovations in that kind of campus environment where there are a lot of stakeholders in taking place and a lot of different type of services and, 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 and businesses which are then around logistics or, or, or whatever services Old there for, for drones and, and so kind mm. of the new things. Wonderful, wonderful examples. And I think I would also like to highlight one other local great innovation ecosystem. And we're bringing in uh, Michael from Leuven. So Leuven was awarded the title of European Capital of Innovation in 2020. Yes. Michael, what are the success factors inspiring actions thanks to which Leuven was able to obtain this recognition? What's your story? Yes, uh, okay, thanks for having me and uh, welcome everybody. Um, nice to see, for instance, Fabian again. It's been a while. Um, but maybe let me first start to, to give you a, an idea on the situation in Leuven. It's very much similar to what's happening in Oulu. We are a city of about 100,000 inhabitants. If you take the wider area, we are about 250,000, so more or less the same size. And we're also um, grown around university and knowledge institutes. So the University of Leuven is an old university. In four years' time, we will celebrate our 600th anniversary. Um, and we are a very innovative university as well, uh, very much similar to uh, all uh, university. Uh, for four years in a row, Thomson Reuters nominated KU Leuven as the most innovative university uh, in Europe. Um, so we're playing more or less the same league as Stanford, MIT and, and Harvard, for instance. Um, and of course, this translates that translates in a very strong knowledge economy. I think this is what, what was talking about uh, by the previous uh, panel members as well. And we've seen there last year that um, having a knowledge economy can be very good in times of crisis. Uh, so we had record years last year. It's a bit strange to say, but when it comes to turnover in tech transfer, in attracting VCs, in uh, filling incubators and accelerators and developing science park, we really had record, a record year last year, and we're moving on very, very fast. So it's clear that having a knowledge economy 
can be very good to build a sustainable economy. But I think for the panel today, this is not a question. The question is, what's the role of cities? And there I'd like to refer to what uh, Fabienne earlier said. It's about citizens, actually. And I think if we won the iCapital Award, so I'll try to elaborate on that, and that was your question, Simo, I think. Um, what did the city of Leuven do to not only work on industry and technology, but to also have the government, the local government, and the citizens involved? So it's a real quadruple helix model that we're installing in Leuven. Um, and that it's, it's about leadership. Um, it's about leaders setting the goals for the city where we will be. Um, and so we have a very strong leadership in Leuven setting the scene. Uh, it's a very ambitious uh, uh, government we have. The, so the, the city council, for instance, the, the mayor and the deputies. Um, they're real leaders setting the scene. That's one thing. But the other thing is, I think Martin referred to it in his keynote speech as well. So I make some, some kind of a summary of what we heard this morning. Um, but it's setting the scene and setting the targets, that's one thing. But you need to have buy-in of your citizens as well. If the citizens are not okay uh, with the change track that you will walk through, you won't succeed in your change. <clears throat> and change is frightening people, of course. You're moving into something new, in a new endeavor, and people might be scared of this. So what to do to get uh, involvement and buy-in from, from the, the citizens themselves? And I think this is why Leuven, for instance, is one of the key uh, factors why Leuven won the iCapital Award, is that we have been able to set up a model where it's a real quadruple helix, where the citizens get buy-in. So we've created a number of organizations. There's Leuven 2030, focusing on climate change. There's Leuven MindGate. Uh, working on, on technology, industry, and crossovers between different sectors as well. But all of these are organizations that uh, are not, where, where it's not the city government imposing the targets and imposing how we will move forward. It's real, these are organizations that use this collaborative model where leaders from government, but also citizens, leaders from industry, and leaders from academia sit together and jointly define how we will go towards these objectives that we set. And I think that's the main reason why we want the iCapital. We call it uh, a mission-oriented collaborative innovation model. And there we are focusing not only on technological innovation, but also very, very, very much on climate innovation, on social innovation, on governmental innovation. And I think it's this combination of factors that makes it live and is working very well. That's an absolutely fantastic t story, Michael. Uh, since you're talking from the university size, uh, side, I could ask, how should the cooperation between universities and cities work if we want to create the new generation of local innovation ecosystems? What are your thoughts on that? Well, you can do it in, in multiple levels. Uh, um, it was referred to as well, I think, by, by the commissioner and by Fabienne as well. Um, creating startup companies is one thing. Uh, you don't need too much room for startup and for technology companies to, to have them launched, but you need space to have them grow. Um, and so this is something where in Leuven and in Belgium, anyhow, we are very short on space. And so the government is really um, supporting us in finding space for companies to grow. Um, so this, it's this, this difficulty we have in Europe to create um, not just scale-ups, but also multinational tech companies. It was referred to as well before um, by Fabian and by, uh, by the people from, from Olu as well. Um, we really need them to grow. And so there's this interaction between local governments and, and universities to make sure that they can grow. That's one thing. And then the second thing is, if you want to grow, you need an atmosphere that can be, and I think it was similar in audio as well, where you are, have an open, um, an open culture. You have to be an open-minded towards new things, new peoples and new cultures as well. So the, the commissioner made refer reference to that as well. Um, in Leuven, we have 154 nationalities, and it doesn't feel like you are from Flanders or Belgium or Leuven. No, you're just living here, and together we're making change. Um, so, And that's a really key, a key aspect where the government is, is driving these attitudes towards new cultures, new innovation, new, new open, yeah, being open towards change, actually. 
One more question to you, Michael, before I bring you all into the discussion. In your opinion, how should the local innovation ecosystems be deployed in the recovery process of cities? Huh, that's a, a good question. Um, so, yeah, well, for, for Leuven, it's a particular situation, as said, because it doesn't feel like we're suffering that much because we have this knowledge economy. Um, so we are in a bit of a particular situation. What we did in Leuven um, is to have the citizens involved in a number of um, very down-to-earth projects. Uh, we have, for instance, Leuven co-create, um, Leuven supports. And these are all kind of initiatives where the local citizens can do their own kind of contribution in supporting people in, in launching new ideas in, for instance, collecting PCs for uh, poorer people, poorer students. Um, so I, I think it's this, this down to earth approach that the city can have. And that's what I see in Leuven as well. Most sectors or sectors that are suffering most, these are cultural sectors, um, pubs and restaurants, of course. So the, uh, these are the typical um, sectors that are suffering from the economy, and this is where Leuven is focusing most on. Okay, thank you, Michael. Um, I really like how the discussion moved from the big, uh, big level to the citizen level and how to be active and engaged in the city society. And we have got some questions in the chat, and one of the more interesting questions that was posted was by Felix Prol. Uh, he was saying that we've heard today how important the cities are to recovering of economics after the crisis. At the moment, most EU funds run over the member states before they reach the cities. Which benefits would you see if the European Union would start funding cities directly? Are there any disadvantages? So this question is open for all and um, whoever feels most comfortable taking the question Please do go first. Yeah. <coughs> if I start, uh, uh, I would say that, uh, that it will be good because of the uh, application process at the moment is pretty long. And, and therefore, uh, sometimes the urgency is a little bit missed when, when it lasts so long, uh, the application process, uh, that could be good. Of course, uh, maybe there also need to be vehicle how it can be combined so that uh, there will be kind of a bigger scale benefits for for certain kind of themes or topics that uh, it's not not going to be only one uh, spot be getting benefits there but uh, kind of uh, new value at new kind of business and new kind of incomes is when it's coming then it's it's always uh, better for for the society Okay, Pia, you also want to ask. Yes, uh, I quite agree with you, uh, and I also think that we, ha we in the cities are so hands-on with the problems and, and all what is happening in, in uh, our countries and, and our cities, so I think that sounds very good. Okay, no disadvantages. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Olli. <coughs> of yeah. course we cannot, we, yes. can, we, we must not forget cities uh, in, in the recovery funds and, and that the, and the role of cities is, is very important for, for bringing them the, those goals forward, so greener cities and then the sustainability activities, etc. But we must also keep in mind that, that, that the, it's about recovery. So it's not only about uh, with the digitalization, then the cutting the costs and that way getting perhaps ta taxes a bit lower or so, but, but really to look for new growth yeah. also yeah. And, and then the exports and, and, and then the and that kind of benefits for the Europe so that we would be then then com keeping our competitiveness and, and, and then fighting back then against US and China. Don't Michael and Fabian, you already raised your hands and I think Fabian was a tad faster. So Fabian, you go first. <laughs> uh, your mic seems to be muted, I think. Sorry, I muted my, my mic. <laughs> Um, yes, I just wanted to maybe respond to uh, the question from, from the audience and uh, uh, the access also to our programs or funding uh, for potentially for cities. I believe that, um, uh, that the programs that we have put in place and specifically also under uh, the uh, EIC, uh, European Innovation Council and Innovation Ecosystems and the Horizon Europe, 
will provide opportunities also for um, uh, local actors, local, uh, uh, local uh, uh, governing authorities and cities also to uh, potentially uh, apply for those funding and also to be involved in the projects that we will be supporting. Um, Cities for us are also the place where innovation happens and which brings together all the various players. And if we uh, look at uh, the various schemes that we have uh, put in place, for instance, with the iCapital of innovation, uh, we, uh, have, uh, we are directly supporting and rewarding uh, role models, uh, local players, which have been successful and which can, through their successes and also through the practices that they have put in place within their cities, um, towards their economies, towards their innovators, towards their universities, towards ultimately, ultimately towards their citizens. Here we are uh, fostering through our program and specifically through ecosystems and for instance the iCapital Award, we are recognizing this role of cities. And this is for instance a, fi a, a, a financial reward that we uh, foresee for cities where we also expect Expect that uh, these good practices and that these innovative practices are also spread over Europe and also uh, uh, can be used also by the various uh, actors and notably cities uh, with good examples uh, in Europe. We have seen the very good examples of example of Oulu. We have many good examples of our uh, cities applying to uh, our projects. And I believe uh, that uh, our funding opportunities will provide uh, opportunities also for the local players. If uh, you look tomorrow, we will officially launch uh, the uh, European Innovation Council work program and our activities for Horizon Europe. So I really invite you uh, to join us tomorrow uh, in the uh, opening and launch uh, of our uh, work program on the EIC, where you will see that there are opportunities for innovators and also for local players uh, to participate. And uh, I believe that Precisely, we try to offer those solutions also to get back uh, that are also easy, you, that also those various actors can also easily use in the way they are funding. We had uh, just before, I think it was uh, from um, Oulu, where uh, the, uh, who addressed the issue of the application process. And for instance, through the EIC, we foresee a new way also of applications where we have a simplified application process uh, for uh, access to funding via either the Pathfinder or the Accelerator, where we will have the possibility to have different stages of application, pitching possibilities of their projects towards, um, towards, uh, the, uh, fund, to, towards the evaluators, and also a way to get easily, to get a fast, to get the processes also happen faster at the level of the EIC. So there is a range of activities and projects and initiatives and funding opportunities, which I believe will be uh, available available for all kinds of actors of innovation ecosystems in Europe. I invite you to look uh, um, on, 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 on these funding opportunities at the later stage. And we are also rewarding precisely those good practices and very good examples on how to translate innovation into the cities and also towards the cities and then the economies. So I believe that uh, we uh, really also try to listen through our consultation process in preparing our funding uh, strategies and funding opportunities that we also really brought together also uh, the various players, including the cities, and that we tried really to tailor also our funding means uh, towards those players, which may also be on need, uh, be need, would need uh, such funding opportunities. Thank you, Fabian. Very interesting points. Michael, uh, what is your opinion on the discussion so far? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I fully agree that it, it would be very, very beneficial if there could be more direct support from the European level to the level of the cities. However, um, I think we should not underestimate the local national power that is still existing, uh, which is a bit uh, uh, um, blocking sometimes uh, the way Europe and local levels can work. Just to give the example of climate, I personally think climate, but a lot of techno technology areas as well, um, you can't solve them at the local level. You can't solve the, the or, or at the national level. You can't solve the climate problem at the national level. You really need countries to be willing to give up some of their yeah, 
state-wise <laughs> empowerment, some of a little bit of their sovereignty. Um, I think we should need more Europe in, able, in order to allow more local initiatives. Um, I, that's my personal feeling. So, so yes, I agree, we need more local initiatives, but to do so, we need less state involvement and more European empowerment. Thank you, Michael. Discussion has been flowing and so has time also. And we've come to the point where we have our final question. And this question is for you all. And I would hope that you all give a short uh, speech or an opinion of of what the answer should be. We have about five minutes, so you can count it's about one minute per each person, but I won't be stopping you if you do that. But the question will be, what is the future role of local innovation ecosystem slash new generation in the context of the recovery? And how can we make sure that it's diverse enough. It's not only the most active players in the environment who take part in this local innovation ecosystem, but it's, there's a possibility for everyone to be part of that. And who wants to start? <laughs> the joust in between. Ladies first. <laughs> okay, I'll give the floor to Pia and then we go. Well, I think order. that um, in the discussion this far, we, we already know that, uh, that uh, what is needed is a uh, local innovative ecosystem where we have all the players like companies, academia and, and, and citizens as highlighted by Michael. So I, I think it's only through the cooperation that we can really have this uh, working uh, local innovative ecosystem. Thank you, yeah. Pia. And if I continue, uh, I think that we need to now look uh, for the future and we need to see that uh, how we can do the, this uh, green uh, uh, transfer, uh, how we are able to build a sustainable society uh, and all the innovations what be done is so that uh, it is making the, uh, the better future. And, and we need to look about uh, how we can electrify, electricity fight, uh, for instance, transport, or and, and then we also need to look uh, how we are able to bring then the, the jobs and uh, kind of uh, security uh, for the each people because the the job is the best thing uh, for health uh, and the kind of uh, segregations and kind of a, uh, good in a life in, in uh, environment. Uh, so that is the best medicine for many things is the job, and we need to also look that the job generation is is taking place. Uh, why are new innovations and new kind of value add what is able to generate from from the from the local ecosystem? Very concrete examples. Uh, Michael, can you hear me? I'm just checking the camera. Yes. Work. Okay. Yeah. You go next. Okay. So you know personally, what I think to in, in order to be able that everybody will be involved in this change project that we're going through. Um, I think most people and probably um, those who have less means are more, mostly scared by the fact that whatever we're going to do, it's going to cost a lot of money. If you're going to go through this change in climate, for instance, we'll need huge investments. And so I think that um, we should find a way to do infrastructural investments in heating system, in charging systems for electrical cars, in carbon neutral energy supply and whatever it is. Um, but in such way that um, it doesn't scare small individuals to be involved in this change. Um, today, buying an electrical car, isolating your house um, and so on is, are, are things that are scaring for the larger community of people to bear. And I think that's some, an, an area where we can uh, have to discuss on how can we do, make sure that infrastructural investments can be made in such way that there is cooperation from the small individuals, from the real citizens again. Thank you, Michael. Only Fabi. Okay, only goes. First. Okay. Uh, <coughs> the future of local innovation ecosystems, uh, definitely we need more and more cooperation. So the digitalization so far has already or only covered those low hanging fruits. So the banking services, then the travel agencies, then the way we listen music or watch movies, those have been digitalized. But, but everything which is related to physical environment, factories, harbors, or, or transportation, and then these kind of smart city services, they are still yet to come. So a huge 
amount of opportunity still to, to do and of course we cannot trans transform all those physical devices or, or machines then to digital format but there's a lot what we can do and, and the, the, this kind of wireless connectivity for example what I'm representing then uh, that brings then huge opportunities on, on all those sectors and I think that if something is diverse enough to show everybody to join. Thank you, Olli. And Fabien, you have the opportunity as the final speaker to wrap up the conversation. What are your thoughts? Thank you. Um, as I said before, um, cities are essential in uh, driving innovative solutions. It is here, it is in the cities where innovation happens. And uh, the local players, the cities, need to be supported. And referring to uh, your point on uh, inclusiveness, inclusiveness, nobody needs uh, to be left behind. And uh, what we've heard today on the success factors, the needs and the challenges that we are all facing, I believe that here there is a huge role to play um, at the level of uh, policy makers, be they local, be they regional, be they uh, national or European, and at least um, in providing those uh, this support that is really needed, be it in funding or be it, as we heard also today in the discussion, be it in cooperation and in making sure that we reach out to the right, to, to, to your right counterparts that will also need these in, the innovators and the projects also to grow and to scale up. So here it's really a common endeavor where we need all to uh, work together hand in hand, but here policymakers also have a role to play at all levels. And I believe that here, if this cooperation willingness is there, if this openness, as Michael mentioned, is there, uh, and if the good examples can also be used by others uh, all over Europe, I believe that here we have good prospects for also uh, making those bridges and making it uh, a success and leaving nobody behind. Thank you, Fabien, and thank you to all panelists, Pia Pakarinen, Fabien Gauthier, Juha Alamursula, Michael de Blauer ja Olli Liinama for your great stories and thoughts. For the, throughout this panel. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. now, dear participants, you need to change the rooms in the deal room platform for the closing remarks. So I've been asked to tell you that you need to move on to the next session right now and we'll be shortly <laughs> delivering the closing remarks with Deputy Mayor Pia Pakaren. And so I will be seeing you soon. Deputy Mayor Pia Pakarinen, we've had an eventful opening day here at the Eurocities Economic Development Forum. What have been the most memorable takeaways for you from today's discussions and presentations? Hmm. 
Mm, yes, thank you, Simo. Uh, I would like, from my part, to uh, thank all the panelists for the very invigorating morning session. I have been quickly making notes and uh, would like to make the following eight conclusions. First, cities are the drivers in the local innovative ecosystems. With companies, academia and citizens, we can generate innovative solutions with scalable ideas that can boost vigorous and sustainable development and enhance growth and resilience. And also competitiveness, as was referred by Olli earlier in our panel. Then secondly, uh, cities can and should play a key role in the new generation of uh, local uh, innovation ecosystems. Michael referred to leadership in the cities and also in the companies. I think leadership is a very good word to be used here. Thirdly, I think uh, we must support local partnerships for innovation based on the so-called quadruple helix model, where all the relevant actors from public, industry, civil society to academia are on board and con can contribute to the development of innovation ecosystems. Juha mentioned the word trust, Olli mentioned the word openness. Uh, these are really key words in, in uh, these local partnerships. Then fourthly, uh, as we concluded uh, on the basis of the panel discussion, uh, we need to invest or have support to invest more in local innovation and in the dissemination and replication of already tested solutions for boosting local innovation ecosystems. Fifthly, uh, the most successful cities will be those which are able to build innovation ecosystems around green growth and digitalization and other central topics and find game chasing solutions together also in long run. I think Olli was referring to this under our, uh, during our uh, discussion. Sixthly, it goes without saying, as we are here at the Eurocitus meeting, that cities are innovation should be one of the main pillars of the future and recovery. Entrepreneurship are in the front line of the recovery. Number seven, uh, my remarks was that also as Juha mentioned your, during our discussion. And the last but not least uh, of my points, to do this, we need to invest more in innovation in cities in public services, in job creation, mentioned by Juha, for instance, access to the market, also mentioned in the panel, and in education systems. I'm so glad to be able to say education, because, as you know, I'm deputy mayor for education. What about you, Simo? <laughs> well, I have to say that I've been thoroughly impressed by the vigor and the empowerment of the all the participants in this forum and how you seem to tackle these huge things. We're, we're talking about local ecosystems, but they seem to be huge. They're not local, they're global and local at the same time. And it's wonderful to see how these different actors are coming together and they collaborate so well. Of course, there might be some challenges in the beginning, mm. but it all seems quite seamless to me, at mm. least. Mm. It does. And so I would like to thank you, Bia, because I couldn't have summed it better by myself. And I would like to ask the participants, what are your eight key takeaways, all six or five, well, uh, how, um, how, um, how many ever you want to put in the chat? You could also put them in the deal room platform and share with others, because I am inviting you to continue the discussion throughout the day and even throughout the conference. So it doesn't end here. All the speakers and the guests are in the platform. So what better way to keep the flame up than continue the discussion over there? But for today and for the opening day of Eurocities, this is about to be the end of the program for now. So in about 35 minutes, the program will continue with lunchtime chats with the Eurocities teams on Microsoft Teams. And then tomorrow, when we will be back here in the studio, it is time for the study visits and we'll be hearing more about the companies and innovation ecosystem players here in Oulu. So stay tuned and hopefully you'll be joining tomorrow too. But now, 
thank you for joining. Thank you for your questions, your comments. Thank you for everything, for the warm spirit that you've delivered to us throughout this virtual conference. And I am looking forward to see you all tomorrow. We, all the organizers, want to thank you for active participation and let's meet tomorrow. My name was Simo Kekalainen. and this was the EuroCities Economic Development Forum Studio. And it's bye-bye for today. Stay warm and most importantly, stay healthy. See you tomorrow. <laughs>